evaluating information sources, the social media. So you've all heard this before. Trustworthy sources are important. This is true whether you're sharing a social media post or just trying to make a point in a paper. But why? Number one, you want people to believe what you're saying or you wouldn't be saying it in the first place. And number two, sharing incorrect or misleading or even false information can create a really bad situation. If there's a whole bunch of people in effect screaming things via the internet, then it's possible that a lot of people won't know who to trust and could eventually stop believing even authoritative sources. It's harmful and potentially dangerous to add to this echo chamber of misinformation. So how do we do that? Ask these questions before sharing something on social media. Who wrote it? Who is it meant for? How's it being presented? Can I fact check it? I'm gonna share an embarrassing story about something I shared on Facebook just the other day. So a friend had posted this cute infographic and I thought, oh, that seems really clear and useful. I'll do my part to help slow the coronavirus and I just clicked share. A friend and colleague soon commented that my post was actually deemed mostly false by Snopes. I was mortified, but grateful. And what my colleague did by looking for that infographic on Snopes was she was able to find out that actually what's true about it. The CDC recommends wearing a cloth face mask in public to help slow of the spread of the coronavirus. What's false? The percentages displayed in the chart cannot be accurate because no scientific consensus exists on the efficacy of homemade masks in stopping the spread of COVID-19. And what's undetermined? The efficacy of face masks against the spread of COVID-19 is unknown. So in fact, I had shared information that seemed scientific and fact-based that was in fact not. So here's what I should have done. Let's ask the questions when looking at the infographic. Who wrote it? I have no clue. There's no author. Who is it meant for? Well, a Facebook audience, but it also could have been meant for someone else. I have no idea based on the information in front of me. How is it being presented? Well, I see that there's statistics, but there's absolutely no sources of where those statistics came from. The author, whoever that may be, could have pulled that information straight out of the air. Can I fact check it? Yes, I can, and I should have. And if I had, I would have found it on Snopes by Googling face mask, infographic, wear it, and Snopes. If I asked myself the questions before sharing, I would have saved myself the embarrassment, prevented damaging my credibility, and I wouldn't have added to that echo chamber of misinformation. I know you guys don't use Facebook probably, but based on how many outlandish facts that my daughter shares with me that she learns on TikTok, it's safe to say verifying information is really important across social media platforms. What about information you use for schoolwork? Same deal. You want to be believed and you don't want to add to the misinformation. And in this case, you are being graded on it. So the approach is the same, but even more rigorous. For most papers and projects you work on for school, you will have to prove that your sources are credible. To learn more about evaluating sources for academic work, check out our next video, Credible Sources for Academic Research. Thanks for watching.